kind of take something. He's really been able to rack up some really strong losses. It's hard to look as good as in defeat as he has at times. He's obviously racked up singles wins along the way. But here, um, yeah, this this was a hell of a match, man. He really, you know, was able to match size, power, and aggression with, with Alexander. But uh, and while we might not be the biggest fans of his his last name, Jake really is something to watch. You know, Boo! So, No, um, if I could, I'd throw a tomato at you. <laughs> like, I like puns as much as the next guy, but no. <laughs> Jake is, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a hell of a guy, man. He's got a bright future if he, if he, you know, tries to stick, you know, hopefully sticks it out with the company. Cause like I said, you know, in old regimes, he would have floundered into obscurity if not getting cut in general after they split him and, uh, you know, Dean are up, mm -hmm. you know, but they've really done a, a real concerted effort to, to kind of build them both up, you know, in different ways and having him go up against somebody like Alexander, I think was a great test. Obviously another great showing for Alexander. He needs and breeds and wants competition like something. So hopefully that continues. But yeah, I mean, it's no, it's no coincidence that this was the longest match on the show because it certainly was the best. So like I said, if you don't watch this show for no other reason, it, you should watch it for this match. I'm going to build to a point here in a second, but I'm going to ask some questions that may not make sense, but they will make sense eventually. Uh, when it comes to Booker T, are you a dreads or high top fade fan? This is random, but it's good. Um, it, it's going somewhere. Trust me. <clears throat> gosh, I, I, you know, I'm going to go with a fade because he, he wasn't making <laughs> that version. Didn't have as many stupid quotes. <laughs> can't ruffle to where I'm going, but I can still get there. Think about where Booker was when he had the fade. What did he look like? He had a little mustache. And I think he even had like a little like, goatee beard. But he had very simple trunks. I think he had yeah. gloves. And like, it, like his big thing was his trunks had flames on them. Yeah. And that was it. Like Very simple, very low key, and it fit with the TV title uh, kind of cropping of guys. Like Benoit, he wore very simple uh, trunks with, with the 4-H because he was a four horseman. You know, Finley just had his, his little uh, Irish uh, uh, the, the clover thing. Like, that, that, those guys weren't really very bombastic looking. But I think a lot of people, I was hoping you'd set me up for this part, but all right, it's all right, I can get there on my own. A lot of people would consider the King Booker Dreads 2003 on Booker as peak Booker. Mm. But when you think about that, he had gauntlets. His braids were a lot longer. His his trunks were a lot more intricate. He had kick pads. He had very intricate design boots. He, had, he wore suits. He had a, a crown and and big old uh, 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 thing with the the thing with you put on around your shoulders, the, the cloak. There it is. Yeah. He was a lot more unique looking. Yeah. Definitely stood out. Granted, he's a six foot six black dude in 1998 in a company full of white dudes. He stood out anyway. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, like, like we, we knew that. But I mean, in a, a, lar in a less, you know, uh, um, jaded uh, view of, of the world, he stood out more in 05 as he did, say, in 95. <clears throat> when I look at Jake something, I feel like that's the kind of change he needs to make to go from where he is now in the quote unquote TV title. X division title situation, you know, he's fine as a mid card guy right now, but if he wants to be that world champion type guy, he's going to need to do something to up his look. He needs, uh, uh, I like the simplicity of his trunks, but I feel like he hasn't established who he is with that simplicity. That might be on impact. It might be on him. And I feel like we need more from him going forward. We need a different look. And I feel like he needs to find a way to elevate his game the way Booker went from a TV title guy in 98 to main eventing SmackDown pay-per-views in 2006. Like, he needs that upping. Um, yeah. And it's, I mean, there, there's some real, I guess there's, it's, it's much fun to make of the name. There's always, it's almost a, a unique <laughs> irony and opportunity there, like, because of something is almost implying that there's a missing component. Mm-hmm. You know, already like built in because 
the more you were talking about, I'm like, maybe we get with him what we got with Moose. You know, because we, we've really seen an evolution with Moose. Mm-hmm. Um, in that way, and I feel like he got a lot, like, you know, kind of similar to Moose, where he had a lot of, you know, raw potential and, and you know, high power aggression. Because for a while, like, Moose was the only person that felt like putting in any effort into that whole Impact Grand title scenario. Um, what? No. <laughs> Moose. But, um... Yeah, I feel like something may be in that in that position, but yeah, I mean, it's it's great that he got you know he clearly got the in ring uh, potential and all that, but it, it's so much left on that character palette, mm-hmm. which is good. it's just like hopefully we like I said we need to see an evolution with that, um, cause de, cause Dean has basically done a three hundred and sixty, you know, mm-hmm. but I think that it helped him quicker because of the faction they put him in. Like, I'm almost wondering, like, if we do, like, a what if, while Marvel has a what if, like, if we did a what if, like, what if Diener was the something and Jake went with, uh, Rollin by Design if they didn't already have, um, obviously the big Texan, so. Yeah, it, that that could be a, an interesting idea, the, the chase down the rabbit hole, if you will. Yeah. So let's go to the next match. Uh, this one I didn't like at all, so I don't really have much to say about it. Uh, Matthew Rewald and Deanna Prato defeated Trey Miguel and Molina. I don't like what they're doing with Trey. You know, I feel like part of the reason why people loved him so much was because he was silly. And, like, there were still some elements, like, when he tried to do the splits. Like, that was adorable. But it also made me sad because he doesn't do anything like that anymore. Like, he's trying to be super serious, and I get that. But also, like, I don't remember Arb, uh, Arb Van Dam. Oh, my God. God, what is wrong with me tonight? Rob, I don't remember Rob Van Dam ever going so drastically different than what he was. Now, granted, you could say that, you know, for almost 30 years, he was the same character and it was kind of boring. I didn't ever feel that way. I was never like a huge RVD fan, but I always liked having him part of a roster that I was enjoying. You know, like I loved when he was with SmackDown. I loved when he was with uh, Impact. So like, you know, he, I, I look at you know, Trey McGowan, I think to myself, he should be that RBD type. He should be that guy who everyone likes because he's so fun. And and, and whatever they're doing now with him, I just don't think is working. You talking about like the you talking about with the, with the aggression thing? Mm-hmm. Maybe that's um, why they pairing it with Molina, which I hope they do a storyline where they link up because you know it's Molina and 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 Trey deserves all the good things. Um, of course, I guess that would be subjective whether people feel feel like Molina is a good thing or not but um <laughs> I do like that and I feel like the aggression part worked because when he came back Scott was like oh they didn't pick the run <laughs> they didn't want the three they sent you back uh, couldn't live with your own failure where did that bring you back to me like I just like Callahan really you know it to him, and I think that aggression was warranted for that few for that time of what he was doing, at least to show that he could turn up mm-hmm. that way. But I think you're right. I mean, I think I think the perfect mix <laughs> is like, you know, this kid is fun loving and, and, and free spirited, and, and what, what he calls himself, the Fresh Prince of Air, mm-hmm. um, or something like that. But don't piss this kid off. You know what I'm saying? And definitely don't try to bang his mom. Is it the Bel Air of Mid Air? The Fresh Prince, I want to say it's the Fresh Prince of Midair. Yeah, I think you're right. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, but I think, you know, bringing back Molina to kind of bring out some more of that silliness since he can't go and just do that whole uh, clubhouse thing by himself. Well, maybe he could do it with her now. Um, you know, segments can get seductive. Uh, yeah, this is a high book. But, um, yeah, I like that combination. I just, you know, if they go do this few consistently, you got to get them two wins because they... Those two could really pull out some unique combinations together. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Could be interesting. <clears throat> I don't know how long Melina's sticking around for, because I know she's an NWA gal. But Next match is another one that I wasn't too fond on, uh, although I did like the way they were putting over Willie Mack. He had a, a real nice spurt in the middle. Or at, not really mm-hmm. the middle, but near the end. Uh, where he did like a kip-up where he landed like just basically on his heels. I was like, oh, that's not go for your knees. But I don't know. Whenever I see the good brothers, I just instantly check out. And like I like Joe Doring and Rhino. I like Rich Swan and Willie Mack. I just 
It's 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 deuce chilling, and I talked about this. It's deuce chilling, deucing, and I talked about this with James on a uh, True Penny show. Like, first off, I'm I'm kind of getting, and I don't know about you, I'm getting weary of these multi man tag team matches. Yes, I am too. Matches, like we need to sit. Look, man, either because in my mind, they never should have took it off violent. Mm-hmm. Um, and only that should be, be dropping to should be Swan and Willie Mac. To me, it's overdue. We need to see some. Mac is long overdue for some gold. Mm-hmm. Um. And the only reason why the Good Brothers still have it is because of the, the the whole hidden hand narrative. Like it's only on them for a narrative purpose with this whole AEW thing, and it's it's sickening. Um, like we said, nothing against those two talent wise, but it's like AEW guys that that just <laughs> happen to be signed to Impact, but just go to AEW, just get gone now, get. But um, it just make all the sense in the world to have Sw- uh, Swan and, and Rich doing a long term feud with Violent by Design. Like, who has more to get over on EY with than Mac and Swan, particularly Swan? Mm-hmm. Like, it built in. And he has to watch from the sidelines as this little dancing fool and his buddy takes yet another title from him. You, you know, know that, that right there could be a really great feud. Because, like, when, when Young came back and did the whole dilly-dally with, with Swan, it really felt kind of a letdown because, you know, I think this was last year at Slammiversary and, and or like right after, I think, or right before. I, I don't remember when he came back, but like, <clears throat> excuse me. It was one of those things where like, oh, it, it's only Eric Young. But with the idea of like a long term kind of like, you know, um, almost like a Dennis the Menace like feud where Rich Swan it's just like that piece of, of popcorn stuck in your back kernel and you don't yeah. have a toothpick to get it out and it's just there and he's just gnawing at you and it's making it worse. Like that could be a great idea for a feud that they're really not exploring. You know, they're they're doing another angle with Swan and, and, and Young, but it doesn't feel like a continuation of when Eric Young showed up and pile drove him into the stage. At all. And how many times did we see those two have each other's back? Like, Mac held Swan down through his entire world title reign when he was getting jumped and stuff. And, and Mac was on the bad end of a lot of that stuff because Moose basically used him as a as a uh, example to be made. And they've just gone back and forth having each other's backs, which I'm, I appreciate them keeping this long-term friendship going because they could have easily turned it into a feud, which I never wanted to see. But like you said, there's so much go to be minded from like swans this thing that they young like it's always gonna be this thing like swan had it with callahan and you can always go back to that but mm-hmm. now he has young and like so that that even that that adds another thing to swan like you can put him down but he's gonna keep coming back mm-hmm. and, and it's like I feel like the the good brothers are just in the way because it's like they don't need the straps why do you keep it on them are you afraid if you take it off them, they go quit? Please, if that's the case, give it to me and Chad. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Well, I'd like on, to host man. a show on axes. Like I think we'd be great at that. It'd be us doing an hour of shit posting. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, come on, man. Did you see John Cena's bald spot? I can see you after all. Ha ha ha. Who would you trade the Good Brothers for out of AEW? It doesn't need to be a tag team, but what hmm. I will give you is this. You can pick two individuals or a tag team, but if you pick a tag team, you can also pick their manager if they have one. I'm going to be honest, man. I'm going to go. And it can't be man. private party. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to go with two other black guys, Chad. I'm going to go <laughs> with Ricky Starks and your dude, uh, Powerhouse Hobbs. Is Ricky Starks black? He's at least biracial or Italian, like deep Italian. Something like that. <laughs> I'm going with Starks and, 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 and uh, Powerhouse Hive. Y'all can keep Cage and keep Taz, and and I'm I'm going I'm to take that FTW tile off and put it back on Cage and send it back to Taz's house. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Brian, you have to go home. No, Brian, no, you're not allowed to... No, Brian, go home. Let's Let's uh, get him. Get him. <laughs> I just love your response. I'm going with two other black guys. <laughs> ah! 
trying to cut me off at the knees, huh? <laughs> no, I just, I know how much you like Private Party, and I was trying to get a different answer is all. <laughs> yeah. I had some stuff lined up because, like, if it's not taxi, I'm like, okay, well, that, that t- t- took out Private. But I'm like, they got so many other names that we talked about that's not necessarily being used. Um, and I wasn't going to go with the Varsity Blondes because I just, no, I think they'll. I think they go with the, where they at, but um, yeah, I think somebody like Stark could come in. You see him bouncing, you know, back and forth off somebody like uh, people in the X Division, specifically somebody like Bay and and Powerhouse Highs basically speaks for himself. Uh, we just need to see more of him. Mm-hmm. So, you know. the only reason to go after uh, Varsity Blondes is for the manager. <laughs> hey. I, I forget her name, but like, yes, please. Yeah, I would see. See, as much as I love her, I'm not going the butcher and the blade to get back Allie. I'm sorry. No, it. no. The butcher, the blade, the butcher, the bunny, the blade, the butcher. If I can delete one announcer from the history of wrestling, it's, Exc- it's Exc- Exc- Excalibur. Like, I just know. I don't know what it is. I mean, I know what it is. His accent annoys me. His voice annoys me. His cadence annoys me. His, his just douchiness annoys me. The fact that, you know, he thought it was okay to use racial slurs in the wrestling angle that everybody just looked the other way on it annoys me. Because everything about him annoys me. His dumb mask. Why are you wearing a mask? No one cares what you look like. What, are you hideous? Do you not have a top portion of your head? Like, what's, what's the deal, homie? Come on. I don't know who I would trade for, though. Like, they got such a fucking loaded roster. Like, I don't even know who's there anymore. It's too many names. Although I think I would default to Pentagon and Powerhouse Hobbs. I just that that those two I think even if they're not a tag team, like I would trade the Good Brothers for those two dudes in a heartbeat. Hell, I trade the Good Brothers for Anthony Bowens and the the, the cheerleader from uh, uh, the uh, Hollywood Bonds or whatever they're called, yeah. Mercy Bonds. Like that's it. Like they, that and that they would be my new my new group because like Anthony Bowens is the five tool player. He can have a cheerleader manager slash, you know, whatever, and boom. Yeah, and it, oh, man, it's funny. I know she, uh, we haven't seen in a while. I hope she's doing good. Um, and obviously she has Savannah now, and that, that works out better for Steels because it's, it's a you know, it's muscle. Mm-hmm. But I would have, uh, you know, also trade one of the good brothers and get swole and put her with uh, put her with Steels. Yeah. Or have a solo and go after Deanna because, I mean, I think it's been great what she's been able to do in terms of fighting these these veterans. But it'll be cool to see some young talent. That's that's kind of the um, specific reason why I wanted to, you know, if, if her and Tussa ever bang, because obviously their talent level would be there, but this is also a young, you know, a younger uh, star clashing with her. But, uh, yeah, I'd definitely trade, you know, one of them for, for one of the women. You know, obviously not Baker, God, no. No, um, no, no. I don't know why people like her. And it's decently enough as she was when she was there that she can keep her, she can keep Rebel. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I just went to their Wikipedia page. They have way too many wrestlers. I completely forgot that Trent's there. Yeah. yeah. I think Trent, he's you know, Beretta. Yeah. Beretta. Yeah, Beretta. Um, and also, who's, uh, they also got freaking, um, Ann Helico and, and Jack Evans. That's my team. There it is. If I'm going with a tag cool. team, that's who I'm trading the Good Brothers for. And then I'm going to build, like, a giant scaffolding and Damn just, it, just, just point to Ann Helico. <laughs> Chad's going to be like, get me. What? <laughs> if, that, if that dance warehouse isn't torn down from the first good season of Lucha Hunter, well, not the first good season, but when it got good. Yes. Get me scaffolding from the, the first location, put it in Impact, and damn it, <laughs> loan me, loan me, um... Uh, what what's his uh, what you call it for one night? Um, the dude that was with uh, Matt Striker. Freaking, why am I forgetting? Oh, that? Vampiro. Uh, yeah, give me Vampiro for one night, one one spot. <laughs> That's all I need. I hope Vampiro's doing okay. He was dealing with yeah. uh, he's dealing with with dementia, I guess. But yeah. you know, here's hoping. All right. Um. Main event time, Christian versus... Oh, the Good Brothers won, if you care. I don't. Christian versus his nephew, Brian Myers. Uh, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. It was a, sma- a 2009 SmackDown mid-card match. 
it wasn't anything special. There wasn't really any reason for this match to happen. I think most of the reason people like, tuned in was to see Christian in an impact ring for the first time in 13 years. Yeah, that's me. 2008. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so, he went back in 2009, yeah. Yep, yeah, so it's it's one of those things like I didn't think this match was all that impressive. I wasn't all that excited about it. I don't know why Christian has the belt. It's If it helps the company, I'm happy. Yeah. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I was thoroughly enthralled with it because I've never been a Christian guy even when he was in Impact the first time. I liked him for the same reason in 06 and 07 as I did today. Because he helped the company, it made it, you know the company. It took a bit of a a boost in credibility when he joined in two thousand and five. Yeah. But I always thought that he joined incorrectly, if you will, because like Team Canada, it was riding high. You could have easily had Christian come in and be the villain for Team Canada, because Jeff Jarrett was starting to wind down. Like that was the last title run of his career was the one that he lost to. Well, I, no, he actually won it back from Christian. Did he? Hang on. Yeah, he won it back from Christian because he ended up losing it to Sting Bob Glory. But that, like, that was the last year Jarrett was a viable world title contender. And while they did bring in Sting, uh, Kurt Angle not long after, you could have had Christian Cage be the dominant heel and feud with Sting and, and Kurt Angle throughout the rest of 06 and 07, kind of like they did, but not really, because they did focus a lot more on Samoa Joe and Rhino for some reason. But imagine if Team Canada had Christian Cage. That would be huge. But I digress. Marcus, what did you think of the main event of uh, Emergence with Christian versus uh, uh, Nephew Brian? Nephew Brian. Um, yeah, th- like you, man, it was just fine. It, it, you know, it did what it needed to do. Like I said, by that time, the show had already peaked with the X Division match. Um, this match was never going to exceed that. Um, again, it, it was real cool. Cause I, I've, I've kind of always been a Christian fan. I was glad when he did came to Impact and did what he did because I felt like even when he was – like going and doing some single stuff in WWE, it wasn't necessarily ever the, the room that he needed to breathe to do what he always could do when he got that room to breathe and impact uh, TNA at the time. So that was cool to see. And then obviously that led to him being actually able to go back to WWE and do what he did. So um, it's cool to see him back. And uh, obviously I think coming back to, you know, ultimately do a run to say is thank you for, you know, setting me up to even be, a champion like I am now, so that's cool. But yeah, I mean it's, it's Myers, and I don't know about you, but I was talking about this with somebody else. Him and Cardona very much, specifically Cardona, very much still wrestle a WWE style match. You're not wrong. <clears throat> You're not wrong at all. And it stands, yeah, and it stands out. So it, it's you know. it's a, almost a hindrance, really. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, like, this might be, I, I want to phrase this correctly, because I, I don't mean it the way I'm going to say it, but I do mean it in a certain aspect. It's not the worst roster Impact has ever had. There's a lot of talent here. There's a lot of name value here. But this might be the least interesting roster I've ever seen this company have. The Good Brothers, Macklin, Myers, Cardona, Chelsea, like, they're all useless personalities. And I don't want to be that guy, but they're not marketable. Like, maybe you could do Cardona and and Myers as a tag team that's obsessed with, with like, wrestling uh, memorabilia. Like, that might be dope. But they're trying to actually be stars. And, like, Cardona's a jacked-up nerd. (laughs) Like, I mean that sincerely. Like, he's a dude who likes too many nerdy things to be taken seriously as, as a star. And he works out. And, like, Myers, d- dude wears long pants and a singlet. Like, that, that to me is, like, frumpy. Like, that's a wrestling frumpy right there. Like, I, you would be more interesting if you're wearing a sack, an actual potato sack. Like, these dudes are just, they think that they were over in the WWE all because Cardona had like one successful stint 20 years ago doing woo 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 I'm part of Orange County or whatever the fuck that TV show was with Snooky. Jersey Shore that's what it was like 
No, I, you can't keep relying on, on, on your, your past. And, like, what, what, what are their gimmicks? Like, what, what? Myers is trying to be the most professional, professional wrestler, but he's, he's not. And that's the, 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 the jab, if you will. Like, I, he's not professional, but he's claiming he is. Like, ah, that's a, that's a terrible fucking gimmick. And, like, Cardona's is what? He has a girlfriend who used to be crazy in this company? Oh, fucking hell, man. There's, like, they offer nothing of substance. And, and they're getting, you know, front-seated over guys like Callahan, who every time he touches the uh, microphone, he's gold, but he doesn't do promos as often as he should because the company has to, you know, shoehorn Steve Macklin squash matches. And I'm sorry, but I, I don't get it. Like, this is worse than Triton. That's a deep-cut TNA reference right there. And, like, Saban could be that guy. If, if Shelly is still interested in coming back, Shelly could be that guy. Like, they're a little older, understandably, but, I mean, hell, people were calling Bobby Lashley the young talent against Goldberg, and Lashley's only eight years younger than Goldberg. So, like, 40 and 38 and 39 is no longer quote-unquote old. Just, I... I Rywold or whatever his name is, Rewold, Rewoldy. Like, who, who wants to see these assholes? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't want to belittle these dudes, but, like, why can't you go, hey, you know what? That war horse character on the indies, he's pretty good. Let's go get him. He might be kind of a comedian character, but at least it's something for people to tune into. Uh, you could go and get uh, Sam, uh, what was his name? Not Sam Rockwell. Um, St- Stone Stone Rockwell, yeah. I, the adventure. You can go get uh, the Man Scout. He's fucking hilarious. You can go get Facade or Facade or Facade or whatever his name is. I always said, thought it was Facade, so like I'm just gonna call him that. The uh, the Neon Ninja out of Pittsburgh. Like go, go get him. Like go get actual characters. Go get people with personalities. Stop getting WB retreads that don't have a fucking personality. Oh, Rewald sings. That's so interesting. How are we going to market that? Oh, we won't? Because it's fucking no one cares about his stupid opera house singing? Oh, that's Sorry. cool. Sorry, Cass. Sorry. I just... I, 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 these, these dudes suck, Marcus. And, like, I know people have some enjoyment with them. But, like, why? And it's getting worse because the big name that Impact is interested in is the one big name, Marcus, that I don't want to fucking see anywhere near the company. And it's the former Bray Wyatt. Marcus, if he shows up, I'm going to cry. Big old blubbering tears. Yeah, because at this point, even if (laughs) they could put... (laughs) Like, even if he, like, adopted your favorite wrestler, like, your favorite uh, character in wrestling's character, like, it's, it's not going to do anything for you at this point. You've seen, like, and I don't want to say the guy peaked with that Fiend character um, in terms of the, the creative, but I don't necessarily know what he can, going to do now. Like, you either you either do a, a retread of that in some form or fashion, um... Or you try to do like a goon version of the the hillbilly thing? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I would love to see Impact stop signing these hacky ass guys. Now, like, I, if they had gotten Miro or Cody or Kenny Omega or whomever, all right, fair fair game. Let's do it. Let's go. But Matthew Rewald, I don't even know how to pronounce that dude's name. Rewald. <laughs> <laughs> fucking tool time over here. I don't want to see his ass. Like, oh, like, what, like, what's his appeal? He's bald and he does dumb singing. Give me Dan Housen. Go get fucking John Gresham. Like, go, go make a move. Like, I feel like I'm watching the Cavaliers, man. Like, you're just signing anyone that wants to come play. It's embarrassing sometimes. It's not embarrassing because some of them have name value and fan bases that like them, but I don't get why they like them. But it's just, this is the most unimpressive roster I've seen in some time. It's not the worst talent-wise. It's just, God, there's nothing. And they want to bring in Buddy Murphy? Like, Jesus, man. Like, talk about a lack of character. No personality. 
Yeah, because we, look, man, we, obviously, there's a lot to say, and we, a lot, lot that we have said about Tesla, but she came in and she hit. I mean, when, when she first came in, I'm like, Jesus, did she do a China cosplay? And then she just took off from there. But a lot of these people, like you said, Matt, Matthew Whitehall, um, uh, aggressive, it's cool seeing him as aggressive as he is now. Um, Kaz, like you said, Macklin. They do a lot, and they err, err, and they do a lot of that. But that's about where it stops, you know? Kaz has a place only because the X Division is having this return to era form with, you know, Petey and TJP and Shelly and Saban. So, like, I I get bringing in Kaz because he kind of fits that motif at the moment. But you're not putting Kaz in the main event. Although... Kaz's best match in Impact was against Christian back in 2007 at Genesis. I wouldn't mind a rematch. <clears throat> I don't want to see Kaz win because, like, we know Kaz doesn't have, like, a, a, a real personality. He is kind of what he is, and that's fine. But, like, I, I wouldn't mind. But, like, we need to reinvest in characters in Impact. And I think that's kind of what people realize or, or should be realizing now is that the reason why so many talents stay as long as they do in the zeitgeist of wrestling is because of their personalities. Oh, you talking about something about Kazarian. I was talking about Big Cass. Oh, Cass. Oh, no. God, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ew. No. (laughs) Yeah, he's another one that, you know, obviously he went against Edwards and that was the thing. But what what does he do now? (laughs) He's fine. But again, like he has, like his personality is just I'm an angry big guy. Moose, and Moose used to have that personality, but he kind of transformed into a cold, quiet, calculating individual who has like a very violent tendency. I I still think Moose now at this exact moment needs a more flushed out character. But that's only a recent thing. Like, before, you know, he was very much like, I'm Mr. Impact, and I'm going to carry this brand whether you like it or not. I'm Mr. TNA. I'm going to be the the, the standard bearer. And that only ended, you know, not that long ago. So, like, he needs a a, a new shift in focus. But it's not like someone like Cass who I, like, honest to God, like, if you brought in Enzo, I think I'd prefer that. And I'm not an Enzo guy. I just, I don't see the value in Cass. Like, I don't. They need to go yeah. and they need to go and get Bronson Rischsteiner and just just have him be Scotty's uh, disciple, Uncle Scotty yeah. Steiner and his nephew Bronson. And like that, like what a great wrestling name, Bronson Steiner. Oh, that hits, as as the kids say, that hits, Bronson Steiner. Oh, talk about a wrestling name. Not like Steve Macklin. Hey, I, uh, I went and got my taxes done. Oh, who's your uh, your tax guy? Oh, a guy named Steve Macklin. He's pretty good. Like, you're not going to hear that. Like, Mike, uh, oh, who's your barber? Oh, Macho Man Randy Savage. What? No, you're, you're never going to hear that. Stop with these dumb names. Stop. Ugh. <laughs> Remember how simple it used to be? Just name him Brutus the Barber or Hulk Hogan. It's so simple. By the by, my favorite Hulk Hogan moment doesn't involve Hulk Hogan. Marcus, do you want to take a stab at it? <clears throat> no, I'm going to just sit back and enjoy this one. WrestleMania 19. The uh, Coor Light girl, uh, Catfight Girls. They came in. I, I, I don't know. Do you remember those commercials? No. 2002, it was like a brunette and a blonde, and they got into a fight over why they liked Coors Light, and it was like less uh, less calories, more taste, or something like that. And like they got into an argument, and they fell into like a like a, 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 like a not a pond, like like a well, it's the man made version. <laughs> you talking about a little kiddie pool? No, no, no. It's 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 like something you would see like in a, in a square, like a town square or something like that. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. Oh, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, no, a no. no, it's like a, like a like a structure, like and like, like, like it's a water design. Like, ugh, I can't think of the words. So they fall into this giant. Con- I I can't believe I can't remember the the fucking name of this. Uh, let's see, uh, Coors Light can't fight girls. 
Let's see if we can't find something. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So, I can't think of the name of it. <laughs> it a fountain. God damn it. A fountain. <laughs> Oh, got you. I'm like, what uh, <laughs> uh, that's my one per month. So they're they're stripping each other naked as they're arguing over what what's better about these. Uh, it's not Coors Light; it's Miller Lights. Uh, over over what's better about these Miller Lights? You know, less uh, uh, taste, more filling, or whatever. And they fall into this f- water, this fountain, and they're stripping their clothes off, and they're like down to their like uh, their underwear, and like. Some random person just goes, I don't care what it is. It sure is great or some nonsense like that. But it became pretty popular. And they ended up showing up at, uh, the, at WrestleMania that year in 2003 because I think it was a 2003 Super Bowl commercial. So then like a few months later, they were at WrestleMania and they were doing a, a segment with Tori Wilson and Stacey Cabler, I want to say. And the Miller Lite Catfight girls were like, I'm so glad to be at WrestleMania to see Hulk Hogan versus Vince McMahon, they started arguing about who made Hulkamania or WrestleMania, whatever it was. And like the one's like Vince McMahon and the other one's like Hulk Hogan. And I'm like, that's, that's not words. I don't know what that is, but that's not words. And like they went <laughs> back and forth like Vince McMahon, Hulk Hogan. But like every time she would say Hulk Hogan, and I'm like, well, why are you saying it that way? It's almost like Maria trying to say miracle. <laughs> <laughs> like what, what is this? I'll, I'll see if I, if I can't find the clip and send it to you because it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I think my favorite Hulk Hogan moment is still taking that damn all kill across the back of that trunk. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say the time he blew out his knee at Spring Stampede 99. I feel like that's a given. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'd rather watch the Miller Lite Catfight Girls in, in a, a fountain in the middle of, of a city than have to deal with some of these fucking... Dudes coming in from WWE. No, thank you. I want personalities, not you guys. So, anyway, that, that'll do it. Mark, is any final thoughts on Emergence? Like I said, de- decent enough show, man. Stuff happened, but if if you feel like, it, you know, you it's skip skippable, don't skip Alexander versus Jake something. Watch mm-hmm. that. Like, when we say something's a match of the year candidate, it's not because it had 32 false finishes. Yeah, and, and I'm not a fan of that. You know, we're skipping NXT for a reason, because no thank you. All right, so for Marcus Green, you can check him out at Paradox Kid on Twitter, P-A, uh, P-A-R, how, I completely forgot how to spell Paradox, P-A-R-A-D-O-X-K-I-D. That's me. <laughs> this is just, an, I'm, I'm so tired. You can also find him on his other podcast, The True Penny Show. Over on Twitter, uh, check them out by going to their Twitter account, T-R-U-E-P-E-N-N-Y-S-H-O-W. That's True Penny Show. You can find me on Twitter, Chad Nerdcorp, C-H-E-D-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P-N on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. Be sure to check out the website, RailNerdCorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P.com, and on Twitter at N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. We'll be back next Monday for another edition of the Wrestling Underground podcast, which should bring us back to Lucha Underground, hopefully. Uh, And then we'll talk about... tomorrow's impact on monday so yeah that's that's the thing hopefully bray wyatt signs with AEW in the meantime but for marcus green i'm chad portal thanks for tuning in thanks for checking us out thanks for giving us a chance and remember as always to watch more wrestling and avoid the carrion cross promo we don't need to see that demolition nonsense marcus take us home good night me <laughs> <laughs>